Hi, everyone. We're going to get started. Welcome, welcome. I'm Lindsay Strickler. I'm one of the account managers, account executives on the pipeline team. And I'm joined with my colleague today, Jeff Allen, the global pipeline practice lead. And we wanted to focus today's webinar on pipeline mobility workflows. Real quick, before we get started, I wanted to remind everyone that this webinar will be recorded. Uh, and that recording will be made available to all attendees uh, after the webinar. Additionally, we really encourage you to answer questions throughout the webinar, and we'll take those questions at the end. Any questions we don't get to, we'll follow up with a FAQ that will be distributed to all attendees as well. A couple other options that you have on the control panel, you could minimize the screen, expand the screen, and then switch from phone to computer speaker audio if you so choose. And with that, I'll hand it off to Jeff. Cool, thanks Lindsay. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, got a lot of interesting content to cover today around field operations and, and our mobility products. Uh, first, I'm gonna kind of set the stage on what this means and how all these tools in the platform kind of fit together, right? Because we really talk about this mobility and field operations around the concept of, of the ArcGIS platform. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you some of the new tools that we've been developing around field maps and how that fits into this whole infrastructure as well. So really when we think about this uh, field operations workflow, there's quite a few different uh, stages to the work. Uh, one of the first ones that we need to look at is the planning stage, right? Before we go out in the field and we dispatch people to do work or, or follow up with field activities, we want to know what they're doing, where they're going, and who's going to be doing that work. Right, so we have tools in the platform that allow us to help plan this. And this is really where we're seeing a lot of ROI recently around field operations. If we can efficiently move people around the field, uh, then we can save a lot of money on those efforts uh, on doing that work. Secondly, when we're, when we're actually in the field and we're moving up and down the, the pipeline facilities, obviously this ability to navigate along the, the, uh, the route is important. And there's a couple of different interesting sort of unique uh, twists to this from an Esri perspective. One, we wanna be able to put your facilities and your assets on the map as you're doing the turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Uh, two, we also often have times, especially in pipeline workflows where the place you're going along the pipeline is often not on the commercial roads, right? It's down a right of way, it's uh, on a private road or an access road, and we have the ability to, to basically build in those custom roads into those turn-by-turn -turn navigations and get that field personnel right directly where they need to go. As workforce turns over and as we have new people entering the organization, this becomes really critical to be able to move around. We're losing a lot of institutional knowledge about how we navigate up and down the pipeline right away to get to certain locations. So this capability within the platform is, is key, again, from that ROI perspective. Then once we get to the site, we need to understand what's there, what type of assets are there, where are we, how things line up on the map. So we need to understand, and we use location as that guide to understanding what's happening in the field. So we have tools around uh, sort of that piece of the puzzle and how we move data that we have in the system of record out and make it available to people in the field so they can understand what they're working on and what's around them as they do their work. Then a lot of people think of this as field mobility, but really this is just a piece of the puzzle. Once we're in the field, oftentimes we need to capture data, right? That could be a form, that could be actually a survey grade location of a new piece of equipment that's being installed, a valve or a piece of pipe or a pipeline repair. All that information is critical to bring back in the organization so we can continue to enhance and make changes to the backend system of record to reflect all this field work that's going on. Then as all this work is going on in the field, we need to monitor with and be able to have visibility to that back office, right? So there's tools within the platform that allow us to see what's going on in the field, see where our workers are, what's overdue, what's been completed, what's being done today, what might be due tomorrow, and be able to look at that in a very holistic way, uh, see what's going on, and then make changes to that as needed. And that's really the last piece of the puzzle is to be able to coordinate 
the off the efforts that are going in the field or the efforts going on in the back office. So we think of field operations, we think of all these sort of phases of the work and how they all interact with each other and how all this thing stuff works together. And so from an Esri perspective, that's where we bring in our field applications, right? So we have specific field applications that were designed to, to meet the needs of each of these different uh, patterns that we see in the field. And that's really what I'm going to kind of take you through in the front part of that today is how all these uh, work together in a real pipeline scenario. So there's two kind of cadences to these field applications. The first one being what we call these commercial off the shelf, ready to be you know, fit for purpose applications that you can download, use with the platform, they're ready to go, right? So this is configure first methodology to doing field, uh, to setting up these field applications. So all those icons on that, on that previous page are available to you uh, within the platform in the app stores. So if I go on to the, the Apple store, I can download Collector, or Navigator, or Explorer, and then using the, the, uh, the user type uh, roles I already have, I can turn that functionality on. But that doesn't stop there. And I, I always wanna bring this up when we talk about mobility is that all those pre-built applications are actually sitting on top of our runtime capabilities, right? So there's a huge uh, in-depth API behind the scenes that if you have a very fit for purpose or a very specific field application that you need to build and you wanna sit that on top of all of our, you know, for a better term, ArcGIS plumbing, you can use the runtimes and the SDKs to build out those custom applications as well. So even though we have these out-of-the-box applications that get you going really quickly and have a lot of functionality, it doesn't prevent you from building your own applications that you might need uh, for the field as well. So let me take you through and show you how this actually works and, and some real world scenarios. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll show you a bit of the roadmap and show you how these uh, field applications are evolving. So I'm just gonna kind of switch over to uh, my desktop real quickly. And um, I'm gonna start with that planning phase, right? We talked about the ability to uh, have all these field applications and, and work with the field, but where does that process start? Um, and this is, again, one of the places where we're really seeing a lot of advancements being made. Um, but I'm just starting here in ArcGIS Pro. I've got my, um, my pipeline center lines up. Uh, and really what I want to do is schedule some work uh, for some field workers. So one of those things that I'm going to be interested in is where those operational areas are, right? So most of us uh, in the pipeline industry know this as, as our operating regions or districts where we have field operations uh, set up in the, uh, to do work. So I'm going to kind of be focusing on this Austin operating region right here. I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit. And today what I'm interested in is taking a look at um, some test lead inspections that I might have in this operating region that I want to do. So pulling from that underlying system of record, in this case uh, coming from my uh, UPDM and uh, data model, I'm going to put on the screen all the test leads that fall within that operating district. And because I'm going to be dispatching guys to the field, I'm also interested in where those field offices are. Right, so I've got the district office just outside of Austin, and I've also got a field office uh, just up uh, to the northwest here that I also have some, some staff in. And really the problem I'm trying to solve here is what's the most efficient way to go from these two office locations and go to all these places in the field? So what we did was we, we created a quick task, and what that task does is it actually goes out takes a look at these two locations, takes a look at all the routes and uses our vehicle routing solver problem uh, to come up with the most efficient way to visit all these locations. And what that vehicle solving uh, solver does is basically creates the most efficient routes uh, starting at these two locations. And then what the sequence of the work that would need to be done in all those locations. So here for this office, I'm gonna start here. I'm going to navigate down to this end of the line, pick up three, three test leads. And I'm going to, then the, the quickest way for me to get this work done is to drive up to the end of the line here, 
to number five, hit six, seven, eight, nine, and nine, and end up back at the field office. And then same down here in this area, uh, this is the order that I would need to do these test lead inspections coming out of the uh, out of the Austin district office. And obviously you can see it might not be as obvious as just, uh, you know, putting into my list of test leads one as they occur down the pipeline. Um, how I move around on the on the road network is going to dictate what the most efficient process is uh, for me to do that. Now, once I've got those uh, those routes and I've got those orders of the test leads that I want to inspect, what we did was we just took a, a quick uh, created a quick task, and what we did was we uh, assigned work orders to these locations and then push those out to our, our mobile application. And that mobile application is the Workforce app. So once those are assigned, what I'm gonna do now is just kind of quickly switch over to my iPhone. Just switch to my main screen here. Minimize this. And just pull up my iPhone. So now what we're doing is we're looking at a screen share of, of what's on my iPhone. And what I've done here is I've just downloaded all the apps from the App Store and they're ready to use. So you can see that Explorer application, Workforce, Quick Capture, Navigator. Um, I'll just show the Explorer application first. This is our kind of read-only view of all the maps in the field. Uh, so what if I pull open the Explorer application, I can see all the maps that are being available to me. And I've got just a simple pipeline facilities map. I can pull this open. I can view those assets on the map. Look at different, different maps I've got developed for myself to see different assets. But really what I'm interested in, in seeing is those assignments that were created to me in that, um, in that desktop application. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my workforce application. And you can see I've got pipeline and uh, two projects that I've built for myself. One is my pipeline maintenance application, which I'm doing the test leads uh, inspections in. The other one is the um, uh, pipeline inspections uh, that I'm going to show you in a second relative to ILI and, um, and DIG reports. So I'm going to start with this pipeline inspection. And when I bring that up, what it's going to do is show me all the assignments that have been made to me. So this is the output of that routing uh, scenario. So it's taken all those test leads coming out of that district office, putting them in the order that's most efficient for me to inspect. And if I click on one of these, It'll actually take me to that location, gives me the ability to see a map of, of where I'm heading. So in this case, I can see that test lead location. Uh, there's actually two test leads here at this location. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this work. And this indicates to the back office that I'm actually starting this work, I'm heading in this direction to do this test lead inspection. Now there's a couple different things I can do here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate to that assignment. So again, starting at that district location, it's this is now going to give me the turn by turn directions on the most efficient way to, to reach that first test lead to do this inspection. And you can see the ability here not only to do turn by turn directions like I would normally on my iPhone, but also see those facilities and also be able to navigate right down into the right of way on maybe some custom roads that I have built for this particular this particular route. Now once I arrive on site, then I can do a couple things. In this particular case, what I want to do is I actually want to do a test lead inspection. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the second application, which is our collector app. And again, that's going to drop my pin directly on that test lead. Uh, and you can see here, I've got a couple different options. Um, I can, you know, again here, go from directions, if not on site, I can use my compass, I can change my base map. What I'm gonna do is collect here. And right at that location, there's two things. There's a test lead and a rectifier. I'm gonna collect at the test lead location. And you can see I have all the different uh, options that I can for that particular test lead. Uh, in this case, I, what I wanna do is actually want to um, 
collect the location at this point. So let me just cancel that for a second. And you can see down below on the bottom of the screen here, I kind of have a couple different options. I can actually change the uh, some of the features about the test lead itself, but in this case, uh, and, and I can review the attributes coming from the system record, but in this case, I want to actually capture a related record to this particular test lead. So I don't want to capture a new test lead point. I want to actually capture some uh, related inspection data about this test lead. So you can see it's got this little sort of chain link here, which is indicating that there's uh, a many to one relationship between this uh, this test lead and the uh, and the inspection point itself. So I'll go ahead and open that up. Then I can actually record that information uh, about the the uh, observation, whether it's on or off the test lead uh, the test lead reading on and off. Uh, I can also do some things like, hey, if there's a reason for me not being able to take this uh, test lead uh, reading, I can make that um, make that observation here. So in this case, I have a broken post. I need uh, maintenance required at this location, uh, and I can go ahead and maybe uh, make an attachment and uh, take a photo of that broken test lead, attach it to that point, and then I'm finished go ahead and submit that uh, back to the system of record. And then obviously you can think about this as, as that workflow going on. I can then maybe take up that, uh, that incoming point coming back from the field, maybe assign another work order for somebody to go back in the field and actually uh, fix that test lead and, um, and move on with that workflow. So now I'm just going to switch back over to my portal and show you another workflow. So I'm in my ArcGIS portal now, and um, I've created myself a, a little dashboard for another another type of workflow. In this case, uh, I'm, I want to go out in the field uh, and assign some work to myself to do some ILI data capture. So here I have a map uh, that I built in the portal. It has my pipeline centerline, and it has a number of different points uh, along that pipeline. These are actual ILI uh, anomalies that I want to schedule and go do digs on. Um, so what I've done is I've taken this web map and I've actually brought it into the workforce uh, application itself on the desktop. And you can see I have two projects here. I'm going to go ahead and open it up this pipeline inspection project. And you can see it brings up that same web map that I was using in the portal. But now I can actually see the anomaly inspections uh, that have been assigned on this particular project. So I can create new inspections. I've got a couple already assigned to myself in this area. Um, and these are basically the coordination of the work to go out and, and do the, those, uh, those pipeline inspections uh, at those anomaly digs. Uh, so same cadence once I go back to my iPhone. I'm going to go back to my workforce application. Um, and this time, I'm going to go ahead and open up that pipeline inspection project. So it's a, I'm the same user, but I have multiple projects on my phone. This time, when I go into pipeline inspections, I'm going to see those anomalies inspections that were assigned to me. So you can break up the work in these different types of inspections. So you can move them back and forth. And these inspections or these work uh, items can have different things associated with it. So same idea. I can navigate to this uh, this point since this is a critical dig. It's asked me to acknowledge this that I'm starting this work. So I've acknowledged that I received this. And I'm going to start it. Um, but this time what we've done is we've created a, a survey form instead of a collector project. So now what I've done is opened up my pipeline inspection report. So instead of doing a, a field data capture, I'm actually filling out a form at this location. Um, so the nice thing about these forms is that we can actually have all kinds of logic built into here. So in this case, I'm going to do an anomaly inspection. I'm going to do it at the main line. I'm the guy doing the inspection. And so on, working my way down the form. 
Now here you can have sort of conditional things. So in this case, I can I can both uh, locate myself by by GPS coordinate or by engineering stationing. So depending on the options I pick, the interface will change. Same thing down here on the pipe exposure. So if the pipe is actually exposed and I hit yes, it's going to ask me to fill in details about the, the pipe itself that I'm seeing in the ditch. In this case, the OD, the wall thickness grade. Um, if there's any information that's missing here, I can go ahead and fill it in. I can say, is the pipeline damaged? Yes. Was it repaired? Yes, it was. And maybe I added a sleeve at this location. And again, I can enter the, the, the specific location. In this case, because I've said I'm locating myself by station, the specific map station of that sleeve. And you can see this section of the report is multiple repeating. So I can add multiple locations to this. Maybe I can take a picture of that sleeve, attach it. And then when I'm finished, go ahead and sign off this report and then submit that. So that's two different kind of workflows or two different types of data capture going on in the field. One was the um, one was the look at how we would see the, the surveys. One was an actual physical data capture using the collector. But if I switch back to the office view, there we go. So now I'm back on the desktop. I'm going to go back into that dashboard view. Here, what I'm going to do is, I again, I can see all those locations. I can actually go in here now. If I look at my layers, turn on those <clears throat> completed inspections. So these are all those survey one, two, three forms that I've collected at, at all those locations. And also because I've got tracking going on in the background, I can actually see all those worker locations and all those real-time tracks as well. I can see a summary of all those anomalies I have in the dashboard, and more importantly, how many inspections that are required for this project and how many how many I have complete. So I can track on this project in the back office to see where I'm going. So two workflows kind of end to end, one using uh, capture and one using uh, survey one, two, three. So you can kind of see from those uh, two examples that the heart of this field enablement is all these different applications that, that work around the outside, plan, navigate, understand, capture, and coordinate. Um, and you can see as I went through those existing applications, everything I showed you this morning, you can download and, and use right away out of the box. Um, there's a lot of different things going on. I'm switching between applications. Uh, I'm using multiple multiple maps at the same time. Um, so really what I want to talk about is where we're heading from a product roadmap standpoint. And, and the key here is one of the new products that we're working on is called Field Maps. And what we're doing with Field Maps is greatly simplifying what we're doing in the field with these applications. We're combining a lot of these workflows into a single application that you can use in the field that takes the best of breed of a lot of these different applications and, and simplifies the user experience. This is really based on a lot of user feedback we've been getting, not only from the pipeline industry, but across all the industries at Esri. Uh, focuses on. So the last part of the presentation, I'm going to show you what we're doing in the field maps and, and what our roadmap is there. Uh, so the field map application, very similar. You can download it from the Android or, or the iOS store, um, but it's really going to take the best of these applications and sort of merge them into one, right? So we've got the Explorer application, uh, data collection, tracking, the workforce and task assignments, as well as the navigation capabilities. And, and all these apps are going to be combined into the Field Maps product. So what are the, some of the key benefits of this? Um, one, from a user usability point of view and your field users, there's just a single app to deploy and, a, and more importantly, a single app to learn. Right. So as you teach them how to use it for, say, exploration, um, that same app is the same app you're going to teach them to do data collection as well as take surveys and do navigation. 
uh, it's going to have that single sign-on experience because it's a single app. Once I've signed in once, I have all those capabilities without having to, to switch applications. Uh, it's going to eliminate a lot of the duplication of this offline content. So instead of having to have a, a map package for my navigator that might be separate from my collector app, I can use one map package to drive all those workflows. Uh, it's going to have, therefore, an overall smaller footprint um, to download onto the devices. And then you're going to get that consistent user experience across those apps. So markup is going to be the same tool uh, in, in one application as in the other because it's all going to be inside of field maps. So there's going to be a couple of different um, uh, features in the initial release. Um, so what we're kind of focused on right now is, is the mobile app itself, as well as a new back office web application to help you manage and deploy these field maps. So the back office application is going to be very similar to the apps that you would deploy from either your AGO or your portal. It's going to be item in your application toolbar. Um, and the field map is uh, application is something that you're going to be able to just download onto your devices. So you can see here that um, uh, the viewing of the maps, collecting of the data, recording uh, tracker locations, and also indoor support for indoor mapping is going to be in the first release uh, with the turn-by-turn -turn navigation and the workforce coming in in subsequent ones, uh, as well as on the back office uh, dispatching is is kind of coming in the secondary release. The first release is going to have the web map deployment and the managing of the offline content, and also a new tool for building and creating smart forms inside the platform as well. So here are some of the key capabilities in that first fall release. Um, we're going to have the basic map viewing, map markup. We also have the uh, integration of the high accuracy data collection. So a lot of folks have been asking, especially in the pipeline industry, of uh, how we integrate with, uh, with survey grade GPS devices uh, into the field mapping process. So we'll have support for mapping grade and survey grade. Uh, and then that robust uh, smart form capability for inspections, right? That's, if you saw in that uh, pipeline inspection report, there's all kinds of conditional fields. We are able to replicate that smart form look and feel in the field maps application. So a lot of people are asking me, well, okay, well, I've, I've got all these collector applications. I've got all these field workers. Do I have to buy something new now? You don't. So if you already have a creator or a field worker license or ActuS Pro named user, you'll be able to just download and start using the field maps application. If you're a viewer, you'll still be able to use field maps, but you'll only be able to see and view and do markups uh, within the application. If you have a tracker license, then the tracker capabilities will automatically turn on. Or if you have just a standalone collector license, maybe you bought that with an editor user role, then the, you will turn on the capabilities inside of field maps to collect data and interface with the GPS. So basically, whatever your existing user level is, is just going to turn on and off existing capabilities inside of field maps. So under the viewing category, obviously uh, we have the ability uh, on the map to support things like advanced topology and labeling with arcade expressions. Uh, I do this quite a bit in the pipeline because I label things by my engineering stationing with the plus in between. I have a little arcade script to do that. Uh, so that's really cool. I can now simulate that same look and feel on my web applications. Um, Pop-ups as well, so you can have some pretty sophisticated pop-up window configurations that uh, the field map applications will will support so we can give the, the users in the field a really rich experience when they're selecting on objects and getting details. There'll be a GPS rotate compass tool, be able to select bookmarks, base maps and layers, measure tool, search, uh, you have the ability to share a map either in a screenshot or a little a little clip to other users, uh, and then the direction capability as well. And that directions will either use uh, the R Navigator tool, or you can actually connect it up to the Google Maps turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation or the Apple Maps product as well. From a uh, from a mapping and markup capability, we've had a lot of capabilities here. They'd be able to create leader lines, choose colors, save those markups in one or more layers, turn the markups on and off, 
and be able to share those markups with other users, either by a text message, by an email, or share that back with the with the organization itself. Uh, the marker tool has some free line uh, sketch ups. You can place markers, uh, move the graphics around, have little leader tools. So it's it's quite a nice advancement there on the on the markup capabilities. On the data collection side, uh, obviously the need for GPS, right? One to three meters for above ground assets, you know, less than a meter for below ground. If I'm actually shooting the pipe, I want to be able to, to get real time accuracy on those applications. Number of different partners uh, that we're partnering with, with those GPS. And really more importantly, be able to actually capture GPS in a couple different ways, you know, single point with, with, um, with averaging, or I can actually capture streaming and stream points to create areas and lines, understand the metadata behind the GPS receiver, you know, what's my PDOP, how many satellites am I seeing, what's the confidence level in that location. All that metadata will be stored with those points as we collect them off of those high, high accuracy data collection uh, GPS receivers. We also have that uh, support for inspections, that kind of many to one uh, scenario where I'm actually clicking on an object that already exists and adding the, the um, inspection information. This is where that smart forms I think is really gonna come into play, right? So I can really create a customized experience for that inspection itself that's linked to the objects in the GIS. So I can have conditional visibility, I can have pick lists, I can dictate required fields. And this will all be a, a, an interface that you can customize on the back end uh, to really create these really rich uh, user experiences when they're collecting inspection information about existing assets. For those of you that are also using the uh, the utility network, you'll see there we support not only traditional versioning like we always have, but we now have support built in for offline branch versioning as well. Tracker is now built into the Field Maps product itself. So there's an icon inside the app that you can turn on and off uh, uh, tracking, which creates that breadcrumb trail. Uh, obviously, in the pipeline space, this is important to us from the concept of a um, proof of work. Like not only did what we captured, but where did we go? If I'm doing a pipeline patrol, I want to see that I walk the entire length of that pipeline, not only where I recorded incidents, but all the points in the, in the, along the way. So that tracker capability now is, is built into the field mapping application, takes advantage of uh, all the capabilities that um, that tracker has going on in the background to save battery life. It only tracks when the device is moving. Uh, and you'll be able to see uh, see that interface directly uh, back on the back end office application as well. Uh, anybody who's moved into the space of indoor mapping, um, obviously once you, once you move inside a facility and you want to track your location using indoors, there's a lot of special things that go along there. You know, what are the beacons uh, that are showing you your indoor location, as well as being able to navigate between floors, right? So the uh, ArcGIS Indoors product has an information model that sets up uh, the ability to navigate around a facility, uh, including navigating between multiple floors. And that interface and that experience will now extend into the Field Maps product as well. We also continue to have the ability to do app linking. Even though we have quite a bit inside of this application, there's still the ability to link to other apps that might be on the device. Um, this is still important because we have other types of sensors that we might want to get information from. So we've seen the guys at EOS do a really cool job of interfacing with a pipeline locator. So when I'm in the field, I can have collector or in this case uh, field maps working. I can talk to that pipeline locator device, not only get the GPS location of where I'm standing, but I can also can automatically record the depth to the pipeline coming off the pipeline locator. And we do that by using this, this app linking methodology. So there's all kinds of different uh, schemas for that, for getting information in and out of these applications from, from either your own third party tools, your own tools, or third party tools to, to bring information back and forth into the, into the um, Esri platform.
So this is just a quick matrix of everything that we've got in the original uh, layout for the field maps products. So this is all the functionality we're targeting. I'm not going to walk you through all this, but you can see we have quite a bit of what we have on the roadmap already released in the first beta. Uh, so that's available now for download, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, we have two more, one more beta schedule for a little uh, later on this fall with a final release. Um, as well as the uh, the field maps the field maps web application so that will be released it's in beta now it will be released in its full capabilities in december and um, this is what we've got scheduled for that application so you can see we've got quite a fit of of the capabilities built into the first beta uh, with another beta coming out before the final release so let me just show you what's in that field mapping applications uh, web app. Uh, the first one being feature templates. So I can now go into my field, the, the map that I have set up for my field maps. I can create feature templates. I can lay out the how, the, how those attributes of those different things are going to be displayed to the user. Um, I can have alternate names. I can apply templates. I can also copy templates across my projects as well. Really kind of going towards giving that um, user in the field a very clean and crisp experience as they interact with the data that's in the maps. I talked about this smart forms. So now I can go in and I can lay out uh, different required fields, have pops ups. This is um, sort of starting to migrate in some of the functionality we see in survey one, two, three, but embed it right in the, uh, in the field maps application. And there's a designer to be able to lay those forms out. Obviously, the offline capability is always key to us in the pipeline. We're always in the field, it seems, where we don't have cell phone coverage or Wi-Fi coverage. So the ArcMap field mapping application or the desktop application that's in the in the uh, in our GIS online or in enterprise allows us to set up these offline areas, uh, look at projects and see what layers are already set up to be able to be disconnected and reconnected right we always have issues with layers whether they're they have all the required fields in them so we can manage those those fields right through the uh through the interface and then finally here's the schedule so field maps right now is in beta and what we'll we're we're targeting this fall as a final release and uh, later in October. And in that final release, we're really going to include all the capabilities of collector, explorer, and tracker in that single application. As I mentioned, the, 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 uh, the web app will be, it's in beta right now, but it will be available full release in December. So, how do you get this up and running? Well, here's a QR code. I'll keep it up on the screen. Obviously, these slides are going to be available. Um, but if you go into uh, into the early adopter program, you can scan this QR code and uh, basically download a beta copy of the field map application and get started with it. Uh, it's available right now for both iOS and Android. Um, and the web application is available online as well in the beta. So that really kind of talks to phase one, right? I mentioned we're going to have Explorer, Collector, and Tracker built in. Phase two is going to start moving in uh, the workforce uh, functionality. So we'll add workforce on uh, to that. So all that capability I saw you saw me demonstrate about uh, moving uh, work, uh, assigning work, and starting work in the field is going to be available in phase two. And then the final phase uh, will be uh, rolling in the navigator capabilities. Until that point, we can still do the linking between those applications. So I can go from workforce to field maps, or I can go from navigator uh, to field maps. And this is actually uh, pretty germane to what people in the pipeline space do as well. As well. A lot of people have workforce uh, or a third-party work management application. So those can be connected to, to field maps today, or they have a, an external navigation application uh, that they want to hook into the process. So we've got about 20 minutes left. So what I was going to do is I was just going to give you a, a quick peek at what this looks like. So I'm just going to switch back to my browser and go back to my um, to my portal, 
And if you're looking for the field maps uh, web application, if I just pull down my sort of uh, app launcher here, you'll see the field maps beta listed here in the, uh, in the list of applications. I can open that application. This is where I'm going to basically be able to see all the maps that I have developed for the field. I can configure these maps. And this is where I'm going to have all that functionality of, of setting this up. I can see it where my the name of my map, give it a summary. I can see who this field map is shared with, whether it has offline availability. Look at all the layers that make up uh, this particular thing, which ones are editable, which ones are referenced, and which ones are, are in my base map. Uh, I can look at some of the offline, so I can see which layers can be take, can taken offline. I can set my map areas for my offline capabilities. Um, and here under the Layers tab is where I'm also going to find that ability to go in and start building my smart forms. So right now, I don't have one configured for this particular map, but this is where I'm going to be able to go in and start laying out my smart forms uh, and adding that capability to my, uh, to my field users. So I can think, pull in things like uh, the measure, the work order ID, and uh, lay out these smart forms uh, for data capture. Now, if I switch back over to my mobile device, you can see I have this little test flight application. So when you download that QR code uh, and you pull open the, uh, and you register for the beta, what you'll basically find is that beta will then get registered with this, uh, this in, this application, this uh, this test flight application. I can go ahead and open that up. And you can see all the different maps that I've already got uh, exposed to me inside of my field mapping application automatically pull up in field maps. So here's that CP inspection program. I can go ahead and navigate. to that river crossing where I was doing that CP inspection. So again, everything that I've already got configured for this particular map already works. I can click on the map location. I can see my test lead and rectifier locations. Oops. I can uh, change my base maps out. Let's take a look at maybe some imagery for this location. If I needed to collect a new New, new point to this location because I've got nav collector uh, functionality turned on. I can go ahead and just grab up location, update that point. Or I can go in and maybe do some markups at this location as well. Maybe I just want to add a quick note. Then I can save that and share that markup using the share map application. So let me just share that to myself in an email. And send it on over. So lots to explore inside of here. Um, I encourage you to download the beta, give it a shot. Like I said, all the maps that you've currently got configured in your application will pop up. I can even see all the groups inside of my organization as well. Here's that tracking capability, so I can turn turn tracking on and off uh, around my location, um, and basically replicate inside of field maps all that different um, all the different capabilities that I've got inside of my oops inside of my current web maps. So take a look at it, download it, give it a shot, works with your existing licensing, works with your existing maps that you've got deployed in your portal, and, um, and we look forward to your feedback uh, and, uh, and useful suggestions moving forward.
Great. Thanks, Jeff. That was a great comprehensive view of our mobile apps, and I think it was especially interesting to see it as a part of a pipeline workflow. Uh, so in keeping with that, we have quite a few questions coming through. Um, I'll start with some of the pipeline specific ones. Is Field Maps compatible with pods and or UPDM? So yes, so the uh, field maps would be compatible with both. Um, on the UPDM side, obviously UPDM is an enterprise geodatabase out of the box. And more importantly, the features that we capture in the UPDM, whether they're linear referencing objects through APR or their uh, utility network objects themselves, all those are simple features in the enterprise geodatabase. So they are point lines and polygons. Since we're creating simple features, they're easily shareable to web map, and then those web maps are easily shareable to the rest of the organization through the mobile device. Pod 7 also is a has a implementation pattern that's an enterprise geodatabase. So if you're running an enterprise geodatabase version of Pod 7, obviously those are simple features as well uh, being managed, and it can be moved out to the field applications. If you're using something like Pods Relational, most organizations have some spatial represent representation of those objects in their GIS. Um, so it's just a little bit of work to wire the business attributes that are sitting in pods relational with those locations in GIS. But once those uh, that combination of objects has been created, then we can go ahead and share those uh, simple features out with the rest of the organization as well. Great. And, and somewhat related, we had someone ask uh, how you were able to view the engineering stationing within your mobile application. Yeah, so what I was doing there is I was actually using the calibrated center line. So in, in my case, I'm using uh, two things. I've got calibration points, and I've also got a measured polyline that represents that calibrated line. And in the, in the case of my calibrated center line, I was then using our arcade expressions to manage or to map every vertice with its associated engineering station, as well as every, uh, and in my case, 500 feet along the line, I was placing a tick mark with its engineering measure. Because those arcade expressions are you know, platform independent, they execute on my desktop the same way that they would execute on my mobile device. Gotcha. And if anybody's okay. interested with that follow up, and I can give you an an example or a sample of that arcade expression to use. Would you also be able to view ILI information or other partner data in the mobile app? Yeah, generally most of that data, the ILI data specifically is, is being housed in the system of record in some location, right? So like when we're using ArcGIS pipeline referencing, we're using the odometer readings, bringing those odometer readings into the GIS, and putting them on a map. That's one process. We have all an, uh, other customers that are using partner tools to do that ILI evaluation, but in the end of the day, they create a point location of where those field inspections uh, need to happen. So one way or the other, we're gonna bring those field inspection points uh, into the platform and then use those as locations, then schedule the work out in the field. Great. Uh, Moving to some more specific questions related to, to field maps itself, um, is there any way to review previous inspections in the application so you can kind of compare your current findings with past findings? Absolutely. So when I, when I go into that inspection, that little chain link, um, I'm not only going to see a, a new related record that I'm about to create, I can also see any of the previous records that I've related to that particular object. So if I'm going into, say, a valve inspection, I'll be able to go back and see all the previous valve inspections that have been done at that location. Great. And uh, we noticed that you were tracking your location uh, in some of the demos. Is that all being done through field maps, or how are there, what are your options for tracking field workers? Yeah, so there's a couple of different things going on there. Um, I was running uh, the, the current, the first part of the demo, I was running the current tracker application, right? So tracker is, a, is, a, is an application that you can license that is sits in the background behind all those mobile apps and records the location, uh, the current location of the device. It also publishes the last known location as well. So we can, we can see where workers have been and where they are currently. We use both of those in, in different scenarios. Um, 
And so that is that has been available today. In the field map specifically, what we did is we've now replicated that ability to put that into the uh, to the application, right? And so the nice thing about that, and I, I didn't get to show this, but here I'm just taking those tracker locations, and in this case, I'm mashing them up with current weather conditions. So now I can see my user's last known location from their tracker on top of my pipeline facilities, on top of any weather warnings or current weather condition or advisories that we have going on in the field. So some interesting use cases of, of sort of taking that real-time tracks and then using it in the back office to schedule and maintain work. In this case, look at worker safety. Great. Can you speak to some of the differences between the smart forms and field maps and what's available in Survey123? Yeah, so Survey123 is, is going to maintain and, and be a, a separate product, and a spe separate specialty product. We see Survey123 being what we call more form-centric, right? So we have field forms. They're really not map-centric. They're, they're just filling out locations in the field. It might be a travel time card. It might be a, a pipeline inspection. The reason we have we have navigated towards Survey123 for pipeline inspections is because those forms tend to be very complicated. They're not just simply filling out a, you know, a set of attributes from a collector app. But people have asked us to have that capability in collector as well, because when we think about uh, a pipeline inspection, we can quickly go from just observing the pipe to collecting a location of a new piece of pipe. And so we want to have that ability. So we are building in the ability to have a lot of that smart form capability in the, in the field maps. Uh, it probably won't have everything that we have in the Survey123 app, but I think it's going to have a lot of the features that people are looking for, especially around these pipeline workflows, to, uh, to stay within that single application. Great. Uh, so ArcGIS field maps works offline. Do the tracing capabilities also work offline or any kind of pressure readings? Yeah, so right now that is something that is in the backlog for, for the whole platform is be able to do disconnected tracing uh, in the field applications. Right now you would have to be connected uh, if you are connected, you would be able to be able to run a trace and see the results on the mobile applications. But uh, disconnected tracing, as well as some other functionality around utility network, like looking at associations and being able to explore containers, all of those are being built into the platform for future releases. Great. Uh, some some licensing questions. Uh, are, is there a minimum version of portal or enterprise that you would need to to work with the new field maps? Uh, Ten point six point one is the minimum version that we're targeting for the field maps application. Now, obviously, as you you start to move move into some of these advanced capabilities, uh, there might be a higher version, but that's that kind of the minimum floor that we're targeting for the first release. Okay, and and you mentioned this uh, at the end of the presentation, but maybe it's worth reiterating. Any additional licensing pricing considerations for field maps? No, I mean basically we're going to once you open up the field maps application, we're going to turn on the capabilities that you're licensed for. So if you're licensed for viewing only, then you'll see just the viewing only capabilities. If you're licensed for data collection, like a field worker or an editor, then those capabilities will turn on. So it's going to reuse our, there, there will be no new field worker role, or there's a field worker role, but no field maps role. It's just working off the, uh, the existing licenses you own today. Great. Uh, we have one question for an estimate on uh, when high accuracy will be supported, best guess. Uh, high accuracy is currently in the current beta, so it'll definitely be supported at release one, and it's in the current beta to try out now. Great. Well, a lot of the other questions that are coming in, uh, we'll for sure have responses for you. Some of them are very specific, so we'd like to address them individually. Uh, but we wanted to, to thank you all for coming. And uh, I think the next slide has Jeff's contact information. If you feel more comfortable reaching out directly to Jeff, uh, please feel free to do that.
We also have a brief survey following this webinar. We really appreciate your feedback. It definitely helps us build the next webinars, whether it's uh, topics or styles, anything of that nature. And I, I, think, I think that's all we have for today. So again, thanks for joining and uh, we look forward to keeping in touch with you. Excellent. Thanks everybody. Thank you.